Hello, welcome to today's video. Thank you for clicking. Today we're gonna to be talking about clustered bar graphs and we're gonna be talking more about some of the aspects of a clustered bar graph. So if you remember, bar graphs are for categorical data, not quantitative data. And you can recognize that because the x-axis or the horizontal axis has different categories represented. A clustered bar graph means that it's not just one categorical variable, but it's two. So this is an example of a clustered bar graph that we've looked at in previous videos. You can see one of the categorical variables is represented on the horizontal or X axis. And then the second categorical variable is represented in the legend. So here it's different colors, but it could be patterns as well. So typically the way that a clustered bar graph is set up is the response variable is going to be represented on the horizontal or X axis. And then the explanatory variable is represented with different colors or patterns. So remember an explanatory variable does the explaining. So we would say here that age is going to explain the favorite fruit that you have. Now here we have a contingency table or a two-way table. And remember that it's called a two-way table because it's representing two variables. So we have our explanatory variable here in the rows and then our response variable is represented in the columns. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because the percent or the height of the bars is going to depend on the amount of individuals represented within that explanatory variable option. So here for females, if you look at percent within sex, all of those bar heights are going to be from this, this row right here, 31.7, 2.7, 46.7, etc., and they will total to 100% for the females, and then the same would be true for the males. So, so this percent within sex is going to be how the height of the bars are measured. And so you can see here, we had no and then female, so in this pink, and that was 30%, about 30% or 31%. And you can see here that female and no, that's where that comes from. Also, you can see that if you added up all of these pink bars, they would add to 100%. And the same for males. If you add all of the blue bars, that would add up to 100%. Now, one thing too, when you're looking at two categorical variables or two variables in general, sometimes you can have a relationship between the two, which means here, maybe the sex does affect how uncomfortable people are making eye contact. And if that's true, what we would expect to see in a clustered bar graph is the height of the bars to be very different amongst the different groups. And you actually can see that that is true. And if you did analysis for these two variables, you would actually notice that there is a relationship between sex and how uncomfortable it is to make eye contact when walking around campus. However, if there's no relationship, so if you have two categorical variables as we have here, do you like GVSU and sex or gender, if the height of the bars is very similar, that means that there's probably no relationship between the two things. So here what we're saying is most likely an individual's gender does not affect whether or not they like GVSU. And we can tell that because the height of the bars are similar. Whereas here we think that there probably will be a relationship because the height of the bars are very dissimilar. So that is the end of clustered bar graphs. I hope that this helps explain what it is and what you're looking for and also an idea of how to get to where we're about to make a relationship or study a relationship looking at two categorical variables. Thanks for clicking on today's video. I'll see you in the next one.